Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of the Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. And if you'd like to learn more about the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and you can find all the information there. If you'd like to subscribe to the paper, it's always free of charge. You can get it as a PDF in your email, or you can receive a hard copy through the United States Postal Service. Let us know what we can do for you, and we'll be happy to add you to one of those mail lists. If you've not yet subscribed to our Podbean channel on your computer, go to podbean.com, look for Fulton County Gospel News. You can also do the same on your app on your Apple or Android device. We also have a newer Facebook page called Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. Like and follow that page, and you can see all this content on Facebook. All of this is also uploaded onto our YouTube channel, which is called Mammoth Spring Church of Christ. So maybe you have somebody who doesn't do Podbean, they don't do Facebook, but they watch YouTube videos. All of our content is uploaded to our YouTube channel, and anybody can access that on YouTube.com. All right, today I want to read an article to you from the February 2006 edition of the paper, and it's extremely short, it's anonymous, but I thought it's, well, it's only three short paragraphs long, but I thought it hit something that we should never take for granted, that we should never forget, The title of it is simply, Give Me the Truth. So I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to make some comments from John's Gospel, and then we're. I'm I'm also going to notice a couple verses from the book of Proverbs. But anyway, here's the article. I don't know who wrote it, but it's called, Give Me the Truth. If you are my friend, if you are concerned about my soul, give me the truth. Do not flatter me. Do not praise my virtues while remaining silent about my vices. Do not fear the truth will offend me. Do not treasure our friendship, our friendly relations, above my salvation. Do not think by ignoring my sins you can help me. Do not think that being blind to my sins will prove you charitable. However I may react to it, whatever may be my attitude toward you after you have done it, give me the truth. For the truth, and only the truth, can make me free from the shackles of sin, strengthen me in the pathway of righteousness, and lead me to heaven's joy. If I am wavering, weak, lukewarm, indifferent, neglectful, if I have been overtaken in a trespass, if I have been drawn into the pleasure of the world, if I have left my first love, if I have been led astray by error, or if I have done none of these, but simply need to grow in knowledge and be edified, Give me the truth. Okay, I told you it was short. That's it. That's the article. But it, something doesn't have to be long to be significant and rememberable. And such is the case with this article. So a couple of passages that I wanted to talk about for just a minute in connection with this, again, are John chapter 8 and then two verses from Proverbs. But there's a quote that I found, and I thought it would fit in well with this, but here's the quote. It is better to be told a hurtful truth than to be told a comforting lie. In the end, the truth will make its way out and will hurt much more than it ever had to. Now you think, and that's, again, that's another anonymous quote there, but think about that. It's better to be told a hurtful truth, okay? The fact of the matter is, sometimes truth does hurt. It does hurt to be confronted with something that you need to be confronted with at times. You know, I think... Personally, for me as a preacher, I've run into that dealing, and and I guess in all kinds of scenarios, um, I think of situations dealing with marriage and divorce and remarriage. Uh, I think of situations of that I've dealt with personally over the years on several occasions of someone hearing the gospel, uh, maybe through a personal Bible study or having attended worship. They want to obey the gospel. They want to learn more, but they learn through our studies and conversations that their marriage is an adulterous marriage, and they're living in sin, and they're not willing to give that up. They're not willing to repent. And I have to tell them the hard truth. Until you repent, I cannot baptize you into Christ. You can't continue in sin and be baptized and be forgiven of the sin that you won't repent of. Um, you could think of denominationalism. Someone wants to be uh, to be identified with a, a local congregation, let's say like here at the Mammoth Spring Church of Christ, but they come from a denomination, they were baptized into a denomination, and we talk and we study uh, one-on-one, 
and they say, I still don't think I need to be baptized again. I'll just go somewhere else. That's a hard truth that people are presented with. And the fact of the matter is, most people had rather be comforted by a lie than made uncomfortable with the truth. It's better to be told a hurtful truth than to be told a comforting lie. That is a true statement. But then the rest of that quote was, in the end, the truth will make its way out and will hurt much more. So it might hurt initially, but if I were to lie to someone, if I were to tell them in an untruth and then they stand in judgment before God and the truth comes out then, well, that's still bad for them and it's really bad for me too. Just tell the truth. Give me the truth. Anyway, a passage of Scripture, John chapter 8, what we usually reference a lot of times in John chapter 8, a couple of different things, are Jesus' statement of, I am the light of the world, in John 8 and verse 12, and then his statement, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, in John 8 and verse 32. But those are in the same context. Jesus makes that claim in John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And as you read the text, starting then in verse 13, what follows, Jesus has a back and forth with the Pharisees. Of course, they take exception to what he said. Um, you, you know, you're bearing witness to yourself, and as just one person, your witness cannot be true. Well, he says, yes, I am bearing witness of myself. I know where I came from. I know where I'm going. Of course, Jesus, being uh, part of the Godhead, the divine nature, came from heaven, and that's where he was going back to. But he doesn't just say that. He says, yes, I bear witness of myself, verse 18, but the Father also who sent me bears witness of me. And that's in the that's actually in the present tense in the Greek language. He is bearing witness of me. The works that Jesus did, and he talked about that. Let me flip back here a couple of pages. He actually talks about the works that he did. If you were to read John 5, uh, verses 31, really through the end of the chapter, Jesus talks about four things that bore witness to him as to who he was. Uh, John the baptizer did, the works that he did, the Father. Okay, so God did that on a couple of occasions. He did it at Jesus' baptism, recorded in Matthew 3, but then he also did it on the Mount of Transfiguration, recorded in uh, Matthew 17. But then he says, the fourth thing that bears witness of me, in John 5 and verse 39, are the Scriptures. So, over here in John chapter 8, where we, are, where we were reading, he bore witness of himself, yes, but the Father also was bearing witness of him. And I think John 5, ch- uh, chapter 5, plays well into that idea that the Father was bearing witness of him. That is, that God himself testified to, as to who Jesus was. Anyway, when you get down to John 8 and verse 31, uh, Jesus speaking to the same crowd, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, because some did, after they heard what he had to say. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. That word indeed is interesting. It's the Greek word that means uh, it's, it's what pertains to reality. If you stay in my word, you in reality are one of my followers. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, there, truth is knowable, truth is obtainable, and it's the only thing that can set you free. And that's what I liked about this article. If you're my friend, it starts out. If you're concerned about my soul, give me the truth. Well, think about that. If we have people in our lives who we consider friends, if we have people in our lives that we say we care about, they need the truth. But listen, I need the truth just as much as they do. Give me the truth. Give others the truth. Love them enough to do that. Truth is the only thing that can set you free from sin. Now, in regard to the Proverbs passages... I'm going to turn back here. Let me get my Bible here. Proverbs chapter 27 is the first verse. And listen to Proverbs 27 and verse 5. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Now, in this article, one of the things, and again, it was anonymous, so I don't know who wrote it, obviously, but the idea there talking about ignoring my sins. If you think you can ignore my sins and you're helping me, you're not helping me. You know, think about it this way. If you were to go to a doctor, let's say you've gone to this doctor for many, many years, you know them personally, you go in for a checkup because you've not been feeling well, they do blood work, all kinds of exams, and they see something and they know that it's not good, what would you want that doctor to do? Would you want them to just, hey man, everything's great, all your numbers are fine, just go on home and 
and don't worry about anything? Or would you want them to tell you the truth? Would you want them to diagnose you with whatever the ailment may be? Well, you know what you know what you would want that doctor to do. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. See, that's the thing. If you conceal the truth, that's not love. That's not loving. That's not caring. So that's Proverbs 27, 5. Now, over on the very next page, Proverbs 28 and verse 23, it says, He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he who flatters with his tongue. Now, that verse, Proverbs 28, 23, goes right along with that anonymous quote. It is better to be told a hurtful truth than to be told a comforting lie. And that's, I mean, that's absolutely right. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward. You know, again, place it in the, in the physical or the secular realm. If someone's approaching a dangerous situation or perhaps a dangerous health condition, what do you suppose they would want you to do for them? Would you want them, would they want you to ignore it and act like nothing's wrong? Or would they want you to rebuke or show them what's wrong? We know, we know what we would want. And hopefully if we're going to be a friend or a loved one, we would, we would do what they wanted and needed us to do. So I, I, I really like that article. Again, it's from the February 2006 edition of the paper entitled, Give Me the Truth. And it's only the truth that can set us free. We need to be, if, if we're going to claim to be the people of God, if we're going to be followers of Jesus Christ, it's precisely what he did. He gave people the truth, and a lot of times they didn't like it. Many times they turned away. You know, you read, for instance, here, you read the end of John chapter 6. When he spoke the truth, it was a hard truth, and the text says there in John 6, many of his disciples followed him no more. Sometimes that's what happens. We tell people the truth. They don't like it. They'll go to someone else. They'll go to another church. They'll, they'll come up with something. But there are those people who are of a uh, a nature or of a character who really initially appreciate the truth. You know, some may not appreciate it up front and immediately when you tell them, or maybe maybe I don't, or maybe you don't individually, but take some time to think about it and and realize, listen, they told me what I needed to hear. I know what I needed. They told me. They must really care about me. And and that's that's pretty indicative of, of love and care when you tell someone the truth or someone tells you the truth. Now, the response to truth, that's, that's another thing. That's, <laughs> some people don't respond well to it, but we need to be a friend or a concerned one who's willing to speak the truth. Well, hey, I appreciate you listening to this episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. Again, if you'd like our paper, it's free of charge. Visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com, and we'll be happy to add you to one of our mail lists. If you've not yet subscribed to the Podbean channel, do that. Become a follower of Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. Thanks again for listening today, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast.